In this video, we're going to take a look at this uh, this frequency counter here. This is a um, this is an HP 5342A microwave frequency counter, and this unit on the bench is actually a um, it's a parts unit. I have a the actual one that I use is this one up here, and uh, the reason that this project's come about is um, so I've got some new equipment on the way, and uh, part of that new equipment I've I'm going to uh, be installing it in this in this rack here. So I made some changes to the rack, and my new uh, equipment's going here. This is this is in a Cistron Donner uh, counter, and it's really just a it doesn't work, and I've just used it as a placeholder right now. So this is going to come out, and the new piece is going in there. But when I get the new piece of equipment, uh, I'm going to be doing some upgrades to it, and I'll make a video on that. So this video is really. Um, kind of some uh just some things getting ready for that new project but uh the reason i got this counter apart is this unit's got uh this uh this oven uh oscillator in it this is a this is an option uh it's an option 01 counter which means it has the um the high stability time base and even though this counter here is also an option one counter um, and it's got the, the standby light here for the oven. Uh, I wanted to take a look at some things. So I got to, I took this, this, uh, this counter out and I, I disassembled, um, or I, I unscrewed this, uh, this oven here and there's, there's, um, there's two screws on the, on the, uh, on the main board here that you have to take out and they go into these standoffs and then the, the, ca the oscillator just plugs into this, um, cinch connector here but uh, I noticed that uh, this oven so there's, there's there's screws I hold this bottom on and two of them are missing so I don't know and it's uh, it rattles so I don't know if that's um, how that's supposed to be what I'm gonna do is uh, because uh, this uh, this unit is different or this also is different uh, what I want to do is we're going to take this counter out and we'll take a look at this, the standard and this counter and see if there's um, anything different. I'm not sure if this unit's been opened or not, but I'll take it apart in a minute and show you what I'm talking about. But also, so the main thing that we're going to do in this video is I'm going to upgrade uh, my bench counter to option uh, 004, which is the DAC output. So when I got this unit uh, to take apart, even though it's not listed on the back panel, here is an option four. Um, when I got the, uh, the covers off and looked into it, and sure enough, uh, this is the option 04. As you can see, there's the DAC there, and there's the DAC out coax, and there's some other uh, some wiring that goes here to... Um, supply that option so what I want to do is I want to take this out uh, this board out and I want to put that option in uh, my bench counter so uh, ideal or hopefully when we get done this bench counter will have uh, already has the option 01 it also has the option 02 which is the amplitude uh, the amplitude measurement and it will also have when we get done with video the option 04 which is the DAC out, and you, uh, the DAC out will let you display, or will let you put out uh, any three digits as a DC voltage from a rear BNC panel, and you can run that to a uh, uh, like a voltmeter if you just wanted to look at the frequency there. But uh, there, there's other things you can do with it, and um, so I would like to enable that option so that uh, I can get that capability for this counter. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to get this counter, the bench counter, out of the out of the rack. We'll take it apart. And we'll get the service manual out. And the service manual has a lot of good information in there. It's, it's a retrofit, so uh, these these options were available uh, to be installed by the um, by whoever owns the counter. Uh, as as a kit, you could buy a kit. You used to be able to buy a kit with all the parts, and you could put these options in. So I expect that uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, we'll have to look. I know there's going to be some board changeouts. We'll do that. And then we'll uh, get in the, the manual. There's a um, there's a quick uh, setup to get that option going. So we'll get that set up, and we'll take a look at that. All right, so here's my bench counter now. It's out of the rack. And um, 
I'm noticing now that, uh, and this is actually a good thing. This is this is the oven uh, for my bench counter, and this is the newer. This is an uh, HP uh, 10 811 uh, model oven, which is a which is a much better oven than the older uh, 1050. 10554 10, oven. So the ovens are a little different. They're, uh, uh, there's, there's data sheets available for both of these. And there's actually, I have a, um, there's, a, there's a service manual. It's a 111 page service manual for this oven. And I've, I've done some reading through it, uh, reading through. And I've also, uh, I haven't found the service manual. There probably is one, but I've got a, uh, a um, product brochure for the uh, the 10 uh, 544 oven and th these ovens are, are, are pin compatible um, the the major differences I'm off the top of my head there's a different they have a different cut of crystal I believe this is a um, and you'll have to verify this but I believe this is an AT cut crystal this is an SC cut crystal um, and the difference is being that uh, they have different um, uh, responses as far as temperature changes. Uh, the SC, which is the newer one, the, the 10 8 11, has a better stability over, over temperature. And I believe there's also some differences as far as the drive current for the crystal. Anyway, um, there's a lot of good information on the web that talks about... Uh, these if you want to get on Google and I'm sure you'll find uh, a lot of information, the same information that I've already found and I'm going to let you uh, do all the research to your heart's content. But anyway, uh, the, the the bottom line here is that this uh, oven, which is the 10 8 11, is, uh, is, the, is the better if to choose between um, the 10 544 or the 10 8 11. So I'm going to leave this oven in uh, this frequency counter. But uh, anyway, I still got this oven here and uh, I'm gonna save this because uh, like I said in the beginning, one of the main reasons for tearing into this counter was I wanted to get this oven out for um, my upgrade project that I have coming up. So we'll set this off to the side and uh, we'll take a look at it in a minute and, and I'll show you what, uh, what I mean as far as the, on the inside of this oven. So this, uh, we're in the service manual now for this, uh, this counter. This is, a, again, as I said, a 5342A frequency counter. And we're looking at the, in the front of the, in section two of the manual, there's um, all the instructions for installing the options. There's an option 01 install, an option 02, which is the amplitude measurement install, uh, the option of three, which extends the dynamic range um, without uh, the amplitude measurement. And then the option of four, which is the option that uh, I want to install on this counter. So option of four, uh, like I said, it consists of a the A2 display driver assembly. We'll take a look at that, which contains a DAC. Um, it also has... Um, One more uh, piece that uh, that uh, that needs to be looked at is the microprocessor. So, if the series number of the instrument is uh, 1812 or lower, then this U7 ROM, and it gives the part number there on the A14 microprocessor board, will have to be replaced with the U7 ROM with this part number. So, unfortunately, for the older counters, you can't just install the hardware. There actually needs to be um, some firmware installed with the unit now uh, apparently uh from reading this paragraph if you got an if you have a newer uh counter then the, the firmware is already installed on the u7 rom uh, with the older counters they didn't install that rom so let's take a look and see what uh the serial number is on the target counter so this is the bench counter that uh we're going to be installing the unit on and it's a serial number 2317. So we're well above the 1812. And just for interest, let's look at the donor unit is a serial number 1808. So this is an older unit. Let's take a look at the A14 ROM or the uh, microcontroller board, which is, um, and again, if you look at the cover, 
this is the this is the cover for the donor unit. Um, in this slot here, there's three cards. There's an HBIB card, a processor card, and a controller card. But we want to look at the processor card. So here's our um, our three cards here, HBIB, and the middle one is the processor card. So let's take a look at that. All right. So here is our processor card. And the U7 ROM, and I've already looked at the manual, is this one right here. And as you can see, that is a part number 1818, and it says Q706, but it's a, it's, it's a 0706, and I don't know if that's a misprint or if the manual's a misprint, but anyway. Uh, because the older ROM, if you remember from the manual, was a uh, the U7 ROM, uh, the older style ROM was the 1818-0331, and we're looking for an 1818-0706. So that ROM uh, is in, uh, in the donor card, and the donor counter is the correct ROM. And I got to looking at this, just, this is just a kind of an interesting point, but um, so it's stamped and modified there. So at some point later on, this uh, counter was retrofitted. And if you look, and you may not be able to see this on camera, if you look real closely, um, the pins for this uh, ROM have obviously been uh, resoldered. So at some point, this ROM was uh, changed out to upgrade that counter to the uh, 04 option. So that's kind of interesting. But anyway, so we'll put this back in the donor car or the donor counter. And look at our target counter. So this is our target counter again, the same microprocessor card. And that one's uh, busted, so let's see if I can get that out of there. All right, after uh, much uh, fiddling around with this card, and you can see that uh, at some point somebody has used these pins to uh, sort of pry that out. So we'll need to uh, we'll need to straighten those and probably resolder them. But anyway, this is our target card. Uh, it definitely looks like a newer card, and it has the U7. The 1808 or 1818 ROM. So this card is definitely uh, ready to go. All right. Um, the uh, the new um, or the processor board is out, and I touched up uh, the solder on these uh, test points here to get them uh, straightened out and retouched the solder, and added a new uh, pull tab for the card. It's a uh, it's not too bad. You gotta, you gotta get that little plastic, uh, these little plastic pieces, uh, pry it apart, and then it comes out with a little pin. And see if I can find. Here it is. Comes out with a little pin like that, and you just uh, put it back in on the board and put the new pull tab on. So I um, happen to have another. So I've, I'm I'm loaded down with these counters right now. I've got a third one. And uh, I just took the tab off the processor board for the third one, which also happens to be uh, the uh, U7 ROM is also the 1887 This be this must be a unit unit a newer uh, counter also. This one's uh, as you can see it's already missing the it's missing the front panel which is in the um, closet over there. But uh, this is this is a stripped down counter, basically a standard counter. It doesn't have the uh, uh, it doesn't have the, uh, the HPIB board is missing. Didn't ever, didn't come with one, and it also has the standard. This is the standard TCXO time base. So it's a uh, it's a no frills and a standard counter. And that's that's why I'm using it. Uh, this is uh, another parts unit. So anyway, but uh, that's replaced. So let's go ahead and get uh, we'll get this board back in the counter. And. Uh, Slides down. There we go. We got uh, that board's back in now. It's a um, really a two-handed thing. You gotta sort of um, like walk it into the um, to the to the board connector. There, you can't just just push it straight down. So walk it in, kind of rock it back and forth. And it'll, it'll sit down in there, and the connectors you'll feel the um, the little connector finger start to start to accept the board, and then you just matter of pushing it in there. 
So all right, so that's in there good. So the next thing we need to do is we're gonna get into the donor counter, get the options out, and we'll take a look at them, and then we will install them on the bench counter. All right, um, so we got the, the board out. Um, it's not too bad. There's a couple of screws. Uh, there's one here, uh, one here, and one there, and there's one under the flat cable right there that need to come out. Then you also have to, um, to get the, the front panel off, uh, you need to remove the, the nut that goes to the uh, high frequency uh, sampler, which is here on the end connector. And then to get the board out, there's also a uh, nut, a captive nut on the B and C input for the for the low frequency uh, sampler here. And then you got to take this knob off of the uh, sample uh, knob there. You take take the uh, knob off, and then that just comes out. And it's interesting to note. You know, I see a lot of these on eBay, and a lot of times this thing is uh, this is sheared off. And I guess it's just um, for whatever reason uh, been uh, mistreated um, uh, in their previous lives. Uh, this is busted off a lot of times. And I actually replaced the one on, this is my bench counter here. I actually, when I bought this one, uh, this it was sheared off and I replaced it. And I got it from a, I think I got it from that, that parts counter that I got in the closet. But it's, uh, it's, it's nothing special. It's just a one meg, um, it's, it's just a one meg uh, pot. It's nothing too special. Um, you wanna get the, uh, it's the smaller one. It's an eighth inch uh, shaft. And it uh, actually, I've got. Uh, let me go get one. I got uh, one similar to it. All right, so here we go. It's it's like this one. Um, this is a it's a Clarostat brand, but they've they've got other ones too. If you look for a part number, uh, so like that RV six N A Y S D, and then this is a five K pot. Um, but uh, you change that, so that would be a uh, one oh five for a one meg, and A is uh, should be a linear tap. Uh, this is a um, this is just a five meg. Uh, this is a five k pot, and that's actually going to go to replace when I get around to it and to my oscilloscope. It's the replacement for this right here, which is, uh, was busted off, and they've got a little trim pot hacked in there. But anyway, uh, it's it's you know just like a pot like that, and uh, you know you have to uh, straighten these pins out with a pair of pliers, and then they just solder. And uh, it looks like this one's been replaced because it's all sort of scratched up there. Just be careful when you do this. Um, use a good uh, desoldering tool to uh, remove that because these traces um, have a good tendency to, to lift on you. And then, then you got to get in there with, you know, wire and you got to patch the traces and all. It's just a big pain. So best thing to do, just get in there uh, with a good desoldering uh, tool and, and get that cleaned up. And then you just put the new pot in there and... And away you go. You don't even have to, uh, you don't even need the uh, mounting hardware. Just take it, put it in your hardware drawer somewhere. But uh, anyway, this is the, the board that we're looking at here. And this is the DAC um, in question. So this is the DAC for the 04, the 004 option. And there's also some additional circuitry. And I'll show you on the other front panel board when I get it out. But I believe these four ICs are not uh, populated on the non-option 004 counters, which is why um, the, the manual will tell you to replace the A2 board. This is the A2 board. It'll tell you to replace the A2 board in your existing counter with the new A2 board, and that would come populated with all this stuff. I also think the uh, the uh, DAC out uh, coax connector is not populated either. But um, these are, you know, if you wanted to do this, uh, uh, I've, I've looked on eBay. These DACs can be had for, you know, around $20 or so. Um, and then these are just uh, standard uh, off-the-shelf uh, TTL um, chips. This is a 74LS193. Uh, uh, there's another 74LS193. Uh, this is another one, uh, 74LS193. Uh, and then this one is uh, it's got a HP part number on it, but I think um, this one's also, I don't remember, it's not a 193, it's a different uh, TTL number, but it's it cross-references to just a standard off-the-shelf TTL chip, so you'd have to look into that and get the uh, replacement. But those can be 
bought from your favorite uh, component distributor and then populated. And then uh, you would need to get some sort of a coax, uh, PCB mounted coax connector. And then the, uh, uh, we'll take a look, but these are the, these are the pins for the power supply, the plus 15 and minus 15 power supply, volt power supply that go in to supply the DAC. I got the front panel off. I know one thing I've noticed too, and I already knew this about this counter, but uh, you know, as I mentioned, this counter is only labeled as option 01 and option 11, which is the uh, oven-ass time base and HPIB, but it looks like it's also been retrofitted with the option 02, which is the uh, amplitude measurement option. And I know from just doing some testing that the options not work, that this counter uh, does not work. The amplitude measurement function does not work on this counter. When you try to enable it, you just get the uh, sort of like an error, an error message on the front, which makes the counter think that the options not installed. So I don't know if the board, there's a board for it. I don't know if the board's faulty um, or if there's something wrong with the sampler. I also know this counter, um, doesn't work on the uh, the low band, the, uh, 500, the less than 500 megahertz band does not work. So this may have a problem with the sampler. All right, um, so I got the front panel uh, taken off of the bench counter. And I've, I've been in this counter before already and did some repair work. Uh, one thing that I did was um, uh, for the uh, for the high frequency uh, sampler, um, well, actually, this isn't the sampler. This is the um, for the amplitude modulation. So these uh, these these wires uh, for the module are are connected by um, they're slide on uh, slide on pin connectors, sort of like uh, sort of like these are. But uh, I noticed they weren't very they're not very uh, they weren't very tight, and uh, they tend to get loose. And then when they get loose, the amplitude uh, measurement function doesn't work anymore. So uh, one thing I've done was uh, I've gone ahead and soldered them directly to the the pin connectors and uh, put some heat shrink tube there just to keep them uh, insulated. Uh, there's another another one here and the service manual again you can go in and it's got all the all the information to make sure you get the connections made back uh, correctly. I also because it's a uh, it's a real pain to fiddle with is I replaced the hard line coax uh, with this uh, more flexible piece of coax. Um, uh, yeah, I know it's not the hard line. This is a, you know, this counter goes up to 18 gigahertz. Uh, so there might be some signal loss in here, but uh, it's a, sh it's a short enough piece. And um, anyway, so I just decided that was a, that was a trade-off I was going to make on that. But um, anyway, so just doing a, a comparison here. So this is the, this is the front panel uh, A2 board without the option 004 installed and as you can see uh, it's missing it's not populated the uh, header uh, plug header for the DAC uh, the four uh, TTL chips here the coax uh, connector goes here and uh, the connector pins for the uh, power supply up here and also looks like a couple other parts um, some discrete parts there that aren't populated as you can see up here is trim pots here not populated so, I mean, you know, again, if you wanted to do, uh, if you wanted to put together um, uh, the upgrade, you could, you could definitely go and get the discrete parts um, to do so. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to swap the boards out um, for, the, swap the A2 boards out uh, because I've got it all here. And, uh, and I know that uh, that this, uh, this is working. I had it uh, set up, tested last night in the donor counter and um even though the, the low frequency channel isn't working on the donor counter the high frequency channel does work and i was able to um get uh, the correct values for the DAC out off of this so i'm going to swap the a2 boards and uh then we'll go from there so while you got the front panel out it's always a good time to to take a look at the at the condition if you need to do any repairs this is the time you want to do it i know one thing that i've already done to this board uh, and this is the um uh, this is the display board. I'm not off, sure off the top of my head. It may be the A1. I don't know. But anyway, the display board um, from the uh, bench counter is going to be is going to remain the same, and we're just changing out the A2, which is the um, with the DAC on it. But uh, one thing I've done on the display board is uh, one of these these slide switches here. Um, you know, they get used a lot and they tend to get loose and uh, kind of uh, wobbly. 
Uh, good time to take a look at those if you need to change them out, especially if you have a, um, a good uh, a parts counter. As you can uh, just you know change out the slide switches, uh, clean them real good. Um, I already mentioned uh, the pot. A lot of times you, when you buy these uh, used, you'll find this uh, the sample pot's sheared off, so it's a good time to change that out. And uh, these front panel buttons, which are the, um, you know, these are the, the HP, uh, I forget what they're called, but they're the little uh, clicky buttons. They have the, uh, they have these little uh, steel metal springs uh, down in there. Uh, and you can see they sort of pop up. Sometimes they're missing. I know um, that parts counter that I have in the closet, I think uh, maybe the blue button here, the, the spring is missing, so it just... I think it just, it just sits down all the time. But anyway, it's a good time to get uh, those out. Uh, hit them with a little uh, contact cleaner underneath. Uh, if you need to disassemble them, I'm not going to do that. But uh, if you need to disassemble them, you can, uh, I think you can remelt these uh, plastic tabs and pull them off. Um, there's no, uh, you know, the, 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 the actual switch contact is, is part of the circuit board. Um, so when you take off the housing, you just take off the mechanical side of it and you can get in there and clean it and change the little spring out if you need to, and then uh, put it back together. But, uh, another, another thing too, that, uh, with this board, so these boards are connected. There's a board connector, uh, right, uh, it's under here. Uh, these two screws, there's um, screws, there's the nuts on the A2 side, and then the screws are here. You want to make sure that you get this uh, connection made uh, really good. Uh, if, if you get a bad connection, then you'll get, uh, you know, your display will be all jarbled. You'll have buttons that don't work, or man, the unit may not work at all. So anyway, um, just when you're taking it apart and putting it back together, make sure you get a good uh look at the connector there uh, looks like uh, this uh, board was made by mini so thank you mini for uh, putting this board together all right this is our board to board connector as you can see it's a just a piece that uh, connects the two boards together and let me try to yep there's the there's the contacts there those little gold dots and the same thing on the other board as well. And then this piece just sandwiches in between them. So that's what you got to get uh, put back to get uh, to get it back aligned correctly. All right, and there it is, the uh, the one meg uh, pot. And then the part number, if you're interested, is uh, HP 2100-3607. And this one is made by uh, AB. It's an AB brand pot, uh, but like I said, the clear stats uh, also work. The one that uh, I replaced, which is on this board here, yeah, it's also an HB one. Looks like a 2100-3607 again. You get the part number out of the service manual. And that one is a uh, clear stat, so that's a clear stat pot. But anyway, uh, this board, which was the original board in the bench counters going out, and we're going to put the board with the DAC population into uh, back into the bench counter. All right, there's our board put back together. And uh, it escaped me earlier, but I remember now these are, uh, these are called West Keys. Uh, apparently developed by an HP engineer by the name of West. And uh, that information, uh, courtesy of Curious Mark, he did a video not so long ago where he did a teardown uh, repair of an HP 3325A counter, and uh, which has these keys, as a lot of the instruments do. And he explains in uh, pretty good detail how to take them apart and clean them. So if you want to more info on that, definitely check out, I uh, recommend checking out his channel and uh, looking at that video. That's a HP 3325A um, synthesized uh, level generator that he uh, did some repair work on. Back at the uh, service manual, so we've done, uh, let's see, what have we done so far? Uh, we removed the top and bottom covers. We replaced the original A2 board with the option 004 A2 board. So that's done. Uh, we already verified the ROM uh, situation here. 
We made sure that our counter had the correct ROM, which is the 1818-0706 ROM on the microprocessor board. That's the A14 board. And let's see. So the next thing we need to do, remove the, let's see, this uh, step D here is not going to be applicable for us because we have the correct ROM. We do not need to change the microprocessor board. All right, at the bottom, so this is the next thing we're going to do. At the bottom of the uh, 5342A, uh, we're going to connect the coax, and we need to get these uh, wires here, and we're going to wire them up per this diagram here. So we get the violet wire for the minus 15 supply, the red wire for the plus 15 supply, and the um, the uh, this is the DAC enable line here from the microprocessor, the white and gray striped wire will go there. So we'll take a look at that next. And definitely my least favorite part about working with these counters is fooling with this front panel. It's just, uh, you know, it's so, such a tight space in there. It's just, um, sometimes it can be difficult to work with. But uh, with that being said, I've gone ahead and installed uh, the front panel. We've got the new wiring installed. So this is our uh, DAC enable. Uh, line here and on the uh, front we've got our power supply wires the uh, gray and the red wire there connected to the A2 board and our coax uh, which connects right there there's a, a little bit of a loop in the coax just a little bit of extra coax but it's the same piece that was taken out of the um, the donor counter and it goes back to um, there's a B and C connector there which is the DAC uh, connector and uh, this connector is probably populated on your unit even if it doesn't have that option um, this one was in all the counters that I've the other two counters that I have are the same way even though the, uh, the option may not be installed that they tend to populate that B and C a connector there and if you you'll open it up it'll just be disconnected and this one was a brand new never used uh, bnc connector so now it's got to, the coax hook to it there's a um, little uh cable uh little cable washer uh holder there take that out and uh, put the new coax through it and then i've dressed it with a couple of cable ties just to keep the the wiring harness uh, here sort of uh all uh, tucked in so it doesn't catch on the on the bottom cha of the chassis when you slide it on and off but uh, anyway so now we've got uh, that installed and another thing too make sure you get when you put the front panel back on that you get these there's a uh, two of these uh, coaxes here one of them is the a1j3 which is the top one and there's an a1j1 that uh that uh, goes in there. So and then they're labeled A1J1, A1J3. A1J3. So just make sure. And then mine, the cables are also labeled. So just, you got to pay a little bit of attention there. Make sure you get the cables hooked up right. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to um, flip the unit back over, set it on the bench, and we'll put some signals in and see what uh, see if we can get it working. I get the service manual. Um, we, uh, we did all these steps here, the gray and white wire for the LDA. Uh, we've connected the plus 15 and the minus 15. That's the uh, purple and the red wires. And we also connected the coax to the DAC output on the back of the unit. So we, uh, we got to reassemble the instrument and perform operational verification procedures in paragraph uh, 4-27. Dash 27 is right here. So this is the digital analog converter DAC output test this is for option 04, which is what we just installed. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to apply uh, into the 500 to 18 gigahertz signal or input. We're going to apply a 999 megahertz signal to the in connector, and we're going to connect a DVM to the DAC out on the rear panel. And we're going to use the keypad to put in some uh, various uh, make some changes to the instrument and we'll observe the output uh, from the DAC and the first one we're going to observe is an indication of 9.99 volts DC uh, this is a picture of the setup uh, they're using a, an HP uh, 86 
8620C sweeper with a with an 86222A uh, plug-in. I'm not going to use that. Uh, but we are going to use the counter, and I'll get to my multimeter. I don't have a HP 3465A. And uh, anyway, and then it's going to go through these uh, this instruction here, where it tells us to set up the DAC, and then we'll look for the readings. All right, one thing we're going to do, since we have the front panel apart, is we'll make sure that uh, all the keys are working. There's an operator keyboard check we can do. Uh, we'll put in this uh, these key push presses, and we'll look for the displays, and we'll test um, all of these displays here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go uh, set, push that twice, and then we're going to press the 8 key, and that's what we get our bar bar and blanks except for the eight is what we have there all right we'll press auto and we got all a's we're gonna press the manual we should get b's and decimals and we got them all and we'll press the shift key we'll get l's all right and then we'll go through the keys one at a time uh we don't we we're, the only one we're not going to press is the reset because that'll put the instrument back in normal operation so we'll hit set uh, recall, uh, amplitude, the offset dB, offset megahertz, and CHS key, and then we'll hit the number keys, uh, all the digits down the keyboards, and we'll get the corresponding numbers and all the way down, twos and zeros, and the decimal point. And then the uh, enter key is going to give us lowercase r's. So all those are called out in the manual. All right, we'll hit the reset key. And the instrument's reset. All right, so here's our setup. Um, so we needed a 999 megahertz signal. So I'm going to use um, my uh, uh, E4431B. It's a... 250 kilohertz to 2 gigahertz. So that'll give us our signal that we need. And I've got it set up right now for 999 megahertz and a 0 dB amplitude. And it's feeding into the frequency counter shown here. At, uh, this is just under just a, uh, a few hundred hertz under the 999 megahertz. That's okay. Uh, this isn't a doesn't have any precision reference or anything. Feeding the output of the DAC through this uh, B and C cable up to my uh, my uh, DVM up here. It's going in to just looking at DC volts. So what we're going to do is um, we'll go through the instruction menu here. So we're set up uh, using my signal generator hooked up to the frequency counter going to the uh, DVM up there. And we're set to the 500 to 18 gigahertz range. We're in auto mode, and we connect our DVM uh, to the DAC out. And this generator setup. So what we're going to do is now is press the set blue key DAC three, and we'll look for the display. So we're going to go to uh, set. Hit the blue key and the DAC, which is all the way down there at the bottom. DAC and three all right so it's going to show those three digits there and there's our dvm display so we're 909.97 volts and nine point uh so it should be 9.98 we'll see if that's within the spec Observe DVM for indication of 9.99 plus or minus 0.01. So the 0.01 would be here. And our 0.01 is here. So that is, uh, that is within spec. All right, now we're going to do the uh, next step here on the keyboard we're going to press the set blue key DAC the number six and this time we're looking for 
a uh, DVM reading, and it should be zero. I don't think it's going to be zero because we're not uh, we're not showing zero here. But we'll do. Uh, so we're going to go set blue key DAC six. It's going to show these digits here. So nine nine nine. Uh, plus or minus one digit and we're seeing 9.98 almost 9.99 but round up uh, so that's within spec the manual says it should be um, zero plus or minus 0 0.01 volts uh, that would be um, if we had it set up for uh, Exactly nine ninety nine point zero 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 zero. Um, as this is set up, and this actually tells you to set the generator for nine 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 megahertz, as indicated. So you would have to fiddle around with the signal generator, and uh, I'm not going to do that. But uh, the, the idea here is that uh, we're checking that these numbers here uh, match up with what shows and they do so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch it to five now and what that's going to do is that should show us the digits here so we'll go set blue key DAC five so it's going to show us those digits there and so we should see 8.99 and we're showing 8.98, almost 8.99. So that's, uh, that's, that's within, uh, within spec. Uh, but anyway, and, and you get the idea. We can um, scroll through. It's uh, in the back at the uh, manual here where we're talking about the option. For the DAC, it, uh, it, it tells you, um, so here's the, the digits. Uh, to select the digit, you go set blue key DAC and then five, and then it selects the digits from, and the, the number here is the, selects the, uh, the most significant digit, and then you get the next three digits after that. So the five being here, you would get the most significant digit five, and then digit six and seven. If we wanted to get the first three, we go one, and then you get two and three. But anyway, you get the idea. You can get all the way down to here. So say we wanted to see um, the last three digits, we would go to uh, set blue key, DAC, and uh, nine. So that would give us those three digits there. And we get to 738, uh, 739 hertz. And we see on the display, so we got 7.37, 7.38 almost hertz. So, and, it, and that, get, that gives you an idea of, of how that works. And we can do one more thing too, is uh, go up on the uh, frequency counter and we'll put a frequency of two gigahertz in. And there is our two gigahertz signal, so we can test the resolution there, or test the reading from the uh, gigahertz uh, digits. And we'll go one, so it's going to give us those three there. So we should get. Uh, so this is uh, this digit's blank, so that's a zero. So we should get a zero point one nine one nine eight or something, whatever. We'll see up there, but we get uh, here. We see uh, one. 0 0.19 and that's a 5 so we get the first the last of the digits here um, we go to shift DAC 2 we'll get these two digits now we see um, so 1.99 and we get the uh, 1.99 volts so there we have it um, so yeah I think it uh, uh, worked out pretty good. Um, I don't, uh, I don't have a uh, source that'll get us that. Well, I do have a source that go up to 18 gigahertz. This uh, 
um, the sweep generator that uh, repaired in a previous video, but uh, I got to get it down from the shelf and hook it up. I'm not going to do that. Um, but anyway, so there we have it. And let's go ahead and just see uh, if the amplitude function, make sure the amplitude's working right. All right, so there we go. So when you do the amplitude function, you get the, the these digits here. Um, these will be blank, and then you get the amplitude. So the amplitude saying minus uh, minus 1.1 dB, and this is set to zero dB. But I know that I've got a uh, this cable is at uh, two gigahertz. I get a minus uh, 1.65 dB of loss. So that's uh, within uh, I think the, the accuracy on the on the amplitude reading is uh, plus or minus 0.5 dB. So when you factor. I got a measured uh, 1.65 dB and the minus uh, 1.1, so that gives you the, that's within the the accuracy there of uh, the cable loss. And uh, if we zoom the frequency down to uh, 500, 500 megahertz, so there we go. So 550 megahertz, 549 megahertz at a uh, minus. 0.4 dB. I did measure the cable below 2 gigahertz. So anyway, you get a little bit of loss in the cable, and uh, some with the accuracy of the the counter. It's not a. Uh, this is definitely not a uh, precision uh, indication. Unlike um, uh, if we hooked it up to uh, like an RF power meter or something, but uh, and it gives you a nice uh, uh, ballpark uh, within about half a dB of accuracy of what your input signal is. All right, and just one quick demonstration on the uh, on the uh, low frequency mode. Also, um, so we've got uh, we're feeding into now the uh, low band. This is a uh, 10 hertz to uh, 500 megahertz, and we got our frequency uh, generator set up for 200 megahertz. I changed the amplitude up to 5 dB dBm, and so we're seeing that uh, again. Got the amplitude uh, monitoring on. And we're showing 199 megahertz, and with the DAC uh, set up there at uh, 1.99 volts. So again, working. Uh, one more thing to know too, when you're using the amplitude measuring function, if you set this to one mega or one meg, it uh, really throws the reading off, right? So just make sure you have that set to 50 ohm uh, input when you're checking with the uh, amplitude. Uh, but anyway, there we go. All right, and I uh, went ahead and put uh, some more pieces back on this uh, the knob, uh, the nut here for the BNC, and then this uh, plate. And uh, luckily for this uh, this unit, the plate is uh, split down the middle, so you can you don't have to take the entire plate off. Got a nice uh, label there, option 004. So now we've got uh, the option 01, option 02, option 11, and option 4. Uh, for this counter, so I think there's a well, there's an option uh, there's a there's an option 005 which extends the frequency range to 24 gigahertz, um, but that would be about the only option that we could add to this counter. Uh, the option 03 goes in place of the option 02, so you either have 02 or 03. I think the 02 one's uh, better because you get the extended dynamic range and the amplitude measurement. But uh, anyway, it just depends on what you need. So yeah, let's uh let's uh, put it back in the rack. All right, so I took out the one screw that was holding this uh, cover on, and that comes off just like that. And we'll take a look at the insides here. I'm not going to pull all this out. Uh, there's a board here that uh, is attached. Uh, this board's attached with uh, rivets to the case. And there's another board here, which uh, that might be the... Uh, there's there's I think there's three boards in here. There's a board for the oven Yeah, so there's so this would be this board here is uh, the board that's got the actual the VCO for the for the crystal oscillator And then this board on top then would be the oven controller board and the difference the main difference is that I, I read from the instrument from the manuals uh, this this oven uses a um, uses a switching type uh, controller for the oven um, 
and it also the the element is a is a resistor. It's, it's a not a resistor, but it's got a um, there's a, a heating wire that wraps around the uh, crystal body, and then that wire is is heated uh, and current controlled by the by the oven controller to uh, to maintain the crystal body temperature uh, constant. The um, the the newer uh, units which are the uh the um is this 11 uh 11 8 or it's 10 8 11 i think anyway the newer the newer oven units instead use a uh, they use a pair of darlington transistors and the darlington transistors are thermally mounted to the the crystal housing and then those transistors are controlled by the oven controller uh, and then as the transistors heat up they just heat the the the, the oven case um, to maintain the temperature and uh, the other thing too about that controller is that controller uses does not use a switching type controller unlike the older uh, this model here so and then the manual talks about too when you uh, if you're going to use a common power supply for uh, the oven controller and the crystal uh, the, the VCO that you need to isolate those um, two power supplies. You can use a common power supply, but you need to isolate them with a, I think it's a 10 millihenry choke and a 200 microfarad capacitor uh, shunt to ground, and the choke would be as a series filter to isolate, uh, to keep the switching noise from the controller from interfering with the uh, output of the, of the oscillator. But uh, like I said, again, you can find all the information in the um, data sheets which are, they're really easy to find on the internet. There's lots of other information about these, uh, these, these oven, these ovens. And I found one video where, or not a video, but a um, website where a fellow was using these to make a, a lab standard. And he goes into, uh, there's a whole lot of uh, detail about these. Uh, talks about uh, some of the pitfalls of using these, these oscillators for other things. But uh, anyway, the thing I'm concerned about is I would think uh, this is the only one I've ever taken apart, but I would think there would be a, um, a some sort of insulation that would sit in here uh, to uh, keep this from sliding. Because this, you know, this this will just this pulls out, and that's what that noise is when uh, when I tilt this. Is that this this piece is sliding, and you can see from the uh, inside of the case here that uh, it's been resting on this bottom uh, metal piece for uh, probably uh, quite some time because there's a uh, outline here of this case on this uh, this, this uh, steel piece right here so I don't know if that's uh, you know, if it was uh, something uh, manufactured that way or if uh, this has been repaired maybe and not put together not put back together right but uh, anyway, that's what I found, and uh, you know, if I don't, this is the only one I have to take apart. I, I don't want to. Uh, I don't think I want to tear into uh, the the other one. Uh, just if nothing else, because they're they're different, so the, the construction may may be different. But um, anyway, if anybody has any information, uh, post a comment. And let me know. But uh, it's kind of disappointing because I, I may not. Uh, now that I found that, I may not. Uh, want to use this for my upcoming project. I, I do know when uh, this unit was installed in the uh, in the donor counter that it took a long time for the oven enunciator to go out. And it, you know for the these units equipment, the oven oscillators, they got an oven light on the front and when you first turn the unit on, the oven light comes on if the, if the oven's not at temperature and then after a few, two or three minutes, uh, it should go out on the, on my bench counter with the uh, with the upgraded standard, it uh, it, it goes out uh, probably within about two or three minutes. The oven light will turn off, and let you know that the oven's warmed up. But on the donor counter, which is where the older one came out of, that uh, the oven light was lit for a, a long time, probably 15, fifteen, maybe ten, fifteen minutes before it would go out. So, and it may be because this uh, if this is supposed to have some sort of insulation material in it, and it's been removed. It uh, it just takes longer for the unit to to warm up to its uh, running temperature. But anyway, so that's what we found. All right, well, that's all for, for this video. I'm going to put...
put this counter back together, put it back up on the uh, on the rack, and hopefully when uh, my new uh, my new counter comes in, which is going to be replacing this uh, Cistron Donner counter, which uh, this counter doesn't even work. It's I just used it for a placeholder, but um, it's uh, going to go in there, and we'll do some. I already know uh, a couple things that need to be worked on for this new counter that I'm getting. Uh, we'll do some videos on that, and we will uh, look at upgrading the uh, standard, the, uh, the the internal uh, frequency standard for it to get it a better standard, and uh, we'll look at some other things I want to do to it. But that's all for now, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any comments. Thanks.